that. It's my tire tracks. I want to try to get into some of these bushes and see if I can find anything cool along the edges of these mountains before it gets dark. Welcome back to the channel. I'm out in the Great Basin today. Uh, definitely one of my favorite regions of the country. Mostly because it's just so mysterious and wild and it just such a large expanse of completely untouched land. Some people might see it as as like a just boring desert in the distance. But the closer you get, the more you realize that there's salt flats and mountains and geothermal, you know, hot spring type things all over the place and it really is worth exploring. Here's these bushes I was talking about. And since it's been relatively dry, I shouldn't have to worry too much about any of the salt or mud cracking and getting me stuck. I can pretty much drive anywhere I want, which is just awesome. Look at that. The other thing is, last night it actually got down to single digits. Um, down in these valleys here in the Great Basin, the temperature fluctuation is extreme. It's, the, it's among the highest anywhere in the world. Um, and so you can get, like right now, it's 43 degrees outside, and I have no doubts in the bottom of the valley it's going to get down to zero, maybe even negatives, but definitely single digits tonight. Um, so you got to make sure that if you ever end up stranded um, somewhere in the Great Basin like this, you're actually better off going higher up for warmer temperatures because of the inversions you get at night. Alright, I think just around here I can cut across to the next salt flat. Out here in the Great Basin, this is where a lot of mining took place in the 1800s. And this is why, as far as ghost towns go and abandoned structures, there's pretty much no beating, no beating this area. There's ghost towns on almost every single mountain range, and it's all just public. Anybody can go if you can get there and explore just an insane amount of abandoned structures. So maybe I'll get lucky and come across something here. Because just on the drive down to this salt flat, I saw quite a few mine shafts. Um, so maybe I'll get lucky. All right, so here you can hear the sagebrush scrape in the bottom of the van. Here is the edge of the salt pan. There's actually a small old logging road just up there. Let's see where that goes. See if I can just drive right onto it. There we go. Hey, this road is very well maintained. I wonder if there's some active mining somewhere down here. Um, most of the industry left in the Great Basin in these very remote parts are things like uh, geothermal, nuclear. Um, there is still, of course, silver mining, uranium mining, things like that. Um, and then the other thing that's also mined is, is potash. Um, my potassium that has been decayed down into these little valleys here, um, usually used for things like fertilizer. See, whenever you come to one of those little metal stakes there, to me, that always signifies that at some point there was a sign that was guiding people this direction. So there's gotta be something down here. I don't know if there's an old mine shaft, I don't know if there's a spring. Still haven't found anything yet. Everybody's starting to go up into the mountains, properly in the middle of nowhere. This right here is exactly the kind of place, uh oh. Countered a bit with an end pass here. Let's see what we can do about this.
unfortunately, because of that, I think we will bottom out. Let me see if there's another road. Might have to send the drone up to see if there's another road we can take. All right, I think this is gonna be the only option. All right, I think that's as good as it's gonna get. I think we'll be able to make it through as long as precision driving is employed. Instincts. I'm thinking taking the right on that Y up there. See this right here, this is the exact kind of place Walt and Jesse would drive out to because there is no way anyone is gonna come down. <laughs> I guess that's why they got away with it for so long. I actually see two trees over there. It's not something you see very often in the middle of the desert, so I'm almost positive there's some kind of spring. Up here. Gosh, I love this man. <laughs> Look at this little oasis. Oh, there's a frozen, frozen little pool down there. Yeah, look at that. Let's see. Well, it's definitely not geothermal. <laughs> you can see how many animals have come here. There's not a lot of water. I wonder how I wonder how frozen it is. Barely at all, apparently. <laughs> this is kind of melty as well. It seems like when the water table is high enough, it fills up to this level and spills out here, turns into a little stream. A little disappointing, not gonna lie. I was kind of hoping for more. <laughs> it's alright, I got the cool salt flat to go back to. Oh, someone had fun in there once. <laughs> little abandoned little hut here somebody built. Of course I do need to throw something in the middle of it to see how how frozen it actually is. Alright, let's find out. Alright, barely frozen at all. <laughs> I'm sure it got very cold last night, probably freezes every single night. Got basically no daylight left. <laughs> so I guess maybe it's time to head back to the salt flat because I don't think I'm going to be seeing anything else out here. It's not even four o'clock yet. Is this unbelievable? All right, back on the edge of the salt flat. Let's see if I can just pop off the road. <laughs> it's still so bizarre. And drive right onto it. Oh, it's beautiful out there. And look at that, it's already below freezing outside. <laughs> or 33, it said. Dropped 11 degrees in 10 minutes. Alright, let's see if I can drive back to the wide open salt flat. Driving around salt flats really is the coolest thing ever. And you can see those 
tracks there where clearly people are coming out here and, and racing because uh, a lot of the land speed records are set on a much bigger salt flat that's uh, just over the border in Utah, uh, Bonneville Salt Flat. However, the Bonneville Salt Flats and the Bonneville Raceway are totally flooded right now. Um, I actually drove past that because I was thinking of maybe, you know, camping out there like I'm doing here. Um, I do prefer, you know, the more remote areas like here in Nevada where you really have the whole place to yourself. Um, but when I drove up, it was just like a, a perfectly shiny mirror. And of course, if you're going to drive on that, you're, you know, it's, it's, you're just asking to get stuck. The whole place turns into quicksand. But wow, I mean, look at this. This is really, really something. Hey, look, let me try something that you can only really do in salt flats. Stay in drive. <laughs> and take your car for a walk. <laughs> I don't know why this, I guess this is just a dude thing, but I think it's just so funny. <laughs> Look at that, the car is self-driving. Who, who needs a Tesla when you have a uh, self-driving Ford Transit? <laughs> it would just go on for days. <laughs> I don't know why. Okay, let's uh, I've had enough of that. <laughs> Everyone should just live on salt flats. Make life so much easier. As far as where to camp, well here's a nice big opening. Look at that, here it really goes on forever. I'm thinking for camping, I'll probably just stop right here. I mean, what difference does it make, right? <laughs> I've got the whole place to myself. How about that for a campsite? Now it's just... It's only like 4.30. Temperature's dropping real fast. I think it'll get to, you know, maximum mid single digits tonight. And I'll make some dinner, maybe watch a movie or two, and then spend the night. In the morning, I'll just head out. Headed to Reno to hopefully uh, ski the opening day at Palisades Tahoe, which is this Friday. Um, maybe I'll make a video about that and maybe catch some of you guys there. All right, Ooh. it's cooling down back here already. Let's get that turned on. I've had so many problems with the uh, heating, just the way I had it set up was, was kind of guaranteed to lead to some problems. And the, the tubing that it comes with, that the Propex comes with for the intake is really not that good. It's very flimsy and it ended up buckling so much that it had problems. Uh, with the aspiration so instead I got this uh, corrugated like pond tubing from Home Depot and ran that under the van and now it works just fine which is really nice because it, it can be freezing cold outside and quite warm in here I've also got a much easier way to monitor the amount of propane Although it is a little deceptive because the colder it gets in there, the lower that level goes. That's why I spent a day insulating the crap out of this here and adding a little vent so that some of the heat, you know, I have this on top, of course, so the propane can still leak out the bottom and won't come out of here if it were to leak. But now the heat from that vent over there can at least keep that space inside there warm so it's not too affected by outside. And then the propane pressure is good enough for the gas line to fill up. It's actually going to be getting a little too warm in here for the jacket. I don't put it at like 70, but I think even, I realized that 65 was a little chilly still for the van because it's not all even. Um, 68, 69 is really nice. Like right now it's, it's quite toasty and it's just, it's so cool to, for it to be probably dropping out of the teens already outside. Um, and so warm inside is definitely a cool thing. I'll be raving about that for a long time.
for dinner. It's back to basics. All I've got is stuff to make, like a grilled cheese or something like that. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I have eaten nothing but cereal this morning, so I am pretty starving. Oh, that opens so easily. It used to be a giant pain. I kind of pretended, like you, you couldn't tell in the video, but I had to really lift it and pull it because that wheel was had too much pressure on it and wasn't able to spin. I'll have to go to the bathroom, which won't be very pleasant, especially since there's nowhere to hide. I'll have to dig a little hole. Oh yeah. I have to get in the habit of always locking that because I have destroyed this drawer over and over and over again just because I'm too dumb to remember to close that thing. So it's kind of for show at this point. Alright, let's get that good bread from the grocery store in Tawilla, I think I got this. Yeah, I guess that's all I need. Kicking on again. Oh. Didn't realize how smoky that had gotten. One thing that's super nice about camping here is this might be the most level campground I've ever stayed at. It must be. I mean it's it's so perfectly flat. I wouldn't be surprised if you measured the front and the back for flatness, you'd realize that the biggest deviance is attributable to the curvature of the earth. Don't quote me on that, but wouldn't be surprised. Oh. It's so beautiful. Look at that. Beautiful sandwich. And that is a dinner of champions. It's kind of hot. It is a lot better with that bread. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. So the thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about is that never mind. It's too good. I'll tell you after. Hi again. Sorry, it's been a few hours. I've been uh, working on what I was going to talk about. Which is that before I ever did YouTube, and kind of the whole reason I wanted to live on the road, sorry if the heat, heater noise is it's too loud, it is really, really cold outside. But what I was saying, before I ever um, did YouTube, when I first set out to live on the road, um, photography was my original passion and kind of what drove me to go to all these places. Um, and I made a lot of prints and, and you know sold a lot of those kinds of things and now that the holiday season is coming up I decided to uh, kind of reboot and uh, update uh, if you will my uh, my website and so if any of you are interested in, in buying you know, photography fine art type artwork as a holiday gift or Christmas gift um, my website is, is totally updated now uh, it's everestpix.com e-v-e-r-e-s-t-p-i-c-s.com it's all of my best photography work available for sale on all different types of mediums. Um, and it would really help me out on these adventures. I, you know, YouTube is still something that's kind of new to me. Selling photography has always been uh, something I've been passionate about. So if you're interested, please check it out. It would make me uh, really, really happy if any of you were interested in buying some of those for the holidays. I think it would make a pretty cool gift. But aside from that, I have to go to the bathroom, and so I stepped outside to give that a shot, and it is so cold out there that I bailed, so I'm going to be holding it in, hopefully successfully, until tomorrow when I can get out of here and find a nice bathroom. It would also be kind of weird to go to the bathroom in the middle of a salt flat. I feel like I'd be disturbing ancient geological history. 
Almost nervous to open this door with how cold it is. The nearest weather station, um, just in the valley over from here, says it's four degrees there. Um, and it's probably not on the valley floor like I am here, so I would have bet it's probably around zero or negative one out there. Hopefully my insulation holds up, although the heat has not turned off in several hours, so it's cooling down just as fast as it's heating up. Which is not the best sign, but I should have enough gas to last through the night. All right. Tonight, since it's so cold out there, just to keep everything a little bit more efficient, I'll probably just set the temperature here to 60, I'll do 60, 63. And just save a little bit of gas. I'm wearing all this, so I should be plenty warm. As you can hear, it just turned off. Some people asked me in my last video if I was doing Nutella product placement. No. <laughs> I just love Nutella. It gets free advertising on this channel. I like to keep my shoes right here, that way they are pretty warm. Come morning. All right. I'd say that was a pretty fun day. I've driven on salt flats like this before, but never one like this really, really in the middle of nowhere. Um, I don't know if I explained that properly, but this is just about as remote as you can get in the lower 48 states. I am about 100 miles from the nearest city of more than 100 people, and this little valley, I'm sure it has a name, but not something that's labeled anywhere. None of the roads in here are anything but just uh, dirt forest tracks that have been used for different industries. So I really have this entire valley to myself. I would, I would, I would bet that I not only have this valley to myself, but the next two on either side as well, because there is nothing. So that's a pretty cool feeling. All right, I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. <laughs> Good night. It was an awesome night. I slept in, but that's no surprise to anyone. <laughs> I did raise up that antenna before I went in. That's my cell service booster, and it really makes a difference. Um, so I had great Wi-Fi. I don't actually have cell service here, but my new Wi-Fi network in there, my uh, improved T-Mobile home internet, works really, really well. Um, I mean, I've only had it for two days, but so far it's been way better than the hotspot. This is one of those places where you wake up and you go outside and you're like, what am I doing here? <laughs> definitely one of the more remote campsites I've ever been to. Well, campsites. But it definitely won't be my last time camping on lake beds and salt flats like this. The heat after around 11 p.m. stayed on the entire night, so I really used a lot of propane. But that's just because it was so cold outside that it wasn't even really able to keep the van above 67 degrees, I think was kind of the peak. And then by early morning, probably around 65, um, it's on a thermostat, so it automatically turns off when it reaches, you know, the, the, a degree above the desired temperature. But if it's cold enough, that doesn't happen. So I think it probably went down to a windy zero. I have a bad habit of leaving stuff like this out on the countertops like this and then, you know, I make a turn and everything crashes and burns. A lot of things crash and burn. You just kind of get used to that. First, I drive so carefully, but occasionally you make that turn and you hear things just crumble down behind you and you're like, oh, 
Ah, uh, I hope that was nothing serious. All we've got to do now is drive on out of here and head west towards Reno for opening day at Palisades Tahoe um, tomorrow. Wow, time flies. I know it's just kind of that way, so that's where I'm headed. I know I have to go through this little section of bushes, and then there's the other soft lot on the other side, and then there's a dirt road that I think I have to turn left on for about 40 miles. I, I don't know. I'll figure it out. Well, thank you guys so much for watching this uh, kind of impromptu adventure. I saw this salt flat on the satellite imagery and thought, oh, this is a great spot to go after the other duds on the way here. I'll be in the Great Basin for a while, I would think. Um, and then later in the winter, I'll spend a lot of time in the Southwest. So expect just a lot of cool, unique adventures like this coming down the pipeline. There's a little bit of ice here. See you next time.